Hey guys, it's Curtis, I'm back in the gym and today I'm giving you a review on the Crandall Fitness Professional Deadlift Bar. So if I'm being honest, Crandall Fitness is one of those brands that I just legitimately had not heard of before. Uh, I do, however, listen to the Garage Gym Radio series of podcasts, so that's going to be Garage Gym Radio, Lift History, those kind of things. So if you don't listen to those, you should check those out because that's where I first heard about the owner talking about his line of barbells, his line of power racks. Um, he also reached out to me over Instagram and we chatted for a while and he sent me this barbell for you guys to see on my channel. And today I'm gonna give you my honest thoughts of what I think about it. Now, obviously this is a gray camo deadlift bar, which is a little bit different than anything I've had in the gym before. And if I'm being honest, I really kind of like it. Um, it does come with its own little flavor of intricacies, a little bit of nuance, if you will. Uh, we'll get to that later in the review. First of what I wanted to do is cover the specifications that are on the Crandall Fitness website and tell you how those stack up to what I have in front of me. Coming in with a gray, black and white camouflage finish and a 27 millimeter diameter. Uh, right off the bat there, we can visually see this is gray, black and white. The handle comes in exactly at 27 millimeters, so the shaft diameter, 27 millimeters all the way throughout. It does have a mountain style aggressive knurling like claimed on the website. If you're using the correct kind of plates, you could get this thing up to the claimed 1500 pound capacity. It is a claimed 195,000 tensile strength steel shaft. Um, I have no way of actually verifying that, but that is the number that's claimed, and that number is definitely inside of the band that we're looking for as far as a resilient barbell that will bend and whip, like in a deadlift bar, however, come back to its original state after the lift is complete. The bar is longer, like deadlift bars tend to be, at 92 and a half inches from end to end. It boasts a 15 and three quarter inch loadable sleeve area, which again helps for that 1500 pound capacity if you're using the correct kind of plates. And a 55 and seven ace inside to inside shaft diameter, so that's 55 and seven ace inside to inside that's functional to the lifter. Some additional notes that I have is it does have the standard powerlifting 32 inch neural marks, which is good because that's the sport that this bar is made to help with. It also has a 15 and a half inch area where there is an unknurled portion, but the entire area, the 20 and an eighth inch area between the knurling where it begins and where it goes into the sleeve is knurled. So it's basically knurled all the way up to and stops just flush of the sleeve. Each one of the sleeves does have a rubberized Crandall Fitness band that is removable and you can put in a band of your choosing. I personally think that that's a really nice touch uh, because like I have an EOD Warrior Foundation bracelet and I really don't wear bracelets outside of a watch. Um, and so when I get those, I like to put them somewhere. So I might as well put them on uh, my barbells. Now on those sleeves, those are a double bushing design. So I broke these things down. It did take a little bit of effort. This is the first time I've broken down a screw together uh, barbell end. So basically it, it comes with an internal snap ring, just like most other barbells do. However, the external snap ring where that would normally be is covered by a really thick kind of like not epoxy, but like a high quality sticker badge with a foam backing. So after I removed that foam backing, got my spanner wrench in there, I was able to unscrew it, uh, which allowed me to take some of the spacer rings out and then get out the internal snap ring and I broke the sleeve down. Inside of the sleeve, it was the standard sleeve that you would look for. It was a quality bar going all the way to the end. Um, it wasn't finished on the inside. There is a little bit of very, 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 very minor corrosion. Um, that's just bound to happen. But the entire inside of that shaft was coated in a lubricant, which is gonna help with the longevity of that bar as well as the rotation, which the rotation is not that important in that deadlift. However, you still wanna have that corrosion prevention. Um, but one thing about that style of sleeve construction is that there is zero, and I mean absolutely zero play in the sleeve. So normally on like a power bar, and I've talked about this in other power bar reviews and deadlift bar reviews, there's a little bit of side to side slop. And that side to side slop, it doesn't take away from the functionality of the bar. However, it does make it louder to use. And it's also just one of those things where it's like kind of, I mean, it's, it's called slop for a reason. It's a little bit sloppy. This is able to have zero slop, but still rotate freely. Um, with no binding at all. In fact, when I first got the barbell in, I was under the impression that it had uh, 
bearings. And I was like, well, that's completely unnecessary. It doesn't, it has bushings. Everything inside of that sleeve though is high construction. And I was very impressed with the style of construction. I do start to wonder why more barbells don't incorporate that style. I don't know if it's for ease of manufacturing. It's probably a cost thing because there is some threading there, but high quality bar nonetheless um, with really good parts. That sleeve is a rib style sleeve, however, and I will say that most of the time that I hear people complain about having a rib style sleeve and how it's so loud when you're taking plates on and off, I've kind of rolled my eyes. This is the first bar that I've ever used where I was like, wow, I get it. All right, so this ribbed sleeve, and I don't know what it is about this one. I don't know if it's because there's no tolerance and so maybe it resonates the whole bar or something. But when you're taking uh, plates on and off the bar, it is very loud. Um, it just kind of is what it is. It's really funny. I was out here training one morning and my daughter was inside and she thought that it sounded funny and she started laughing really hard and came out here and asked me to do it a bunch of times, but it is that loud to where my kids who are normally exposed to me lifting were actually at a point where they were like, oh, that sounds funny, do it again. Now getting back to the actual shaft. So the camo print shaft offers a little bit of nuance and that basically comes down to where when you walk up to the bar and it's sitting on the ground, um, it's actually kind of difficult to find your 32 inch neural marks. Um, what I basically found is that when I walk up to the bar, I kind of have to touch them to visually see where they're at. But it was something that for the first workout or two, I had to take a little bit of extra time, but um, as time went on, like third, fourth workout with this thing, um, I was able to basically see it from a distance and just do my normal setup routine. Uh, but just understand that when you get it in, it might take a little bit of time for you to get used to that camo print. Now on that camo print as well, uh, camo prints are difficult to do in a way that is fancy. Like I've never walked up to a Humvee or an armored vehicle and been like, ooh, that camo print is super well done. Great blending. Um, that's actually part of what makes camo camo is that it breaks up you know, solid lines and that's what makes it work right. On that though, there is a little bit as you like kind of, if you grab the shaft and you extend your hands down, you can feel a little bit of where some of these camo prints actually are. And it's not necessarily that it's sloppy, I think it's just inherent in doing a camo print. Does it take away from the bar? Absolutely not. I think that the bar is still incredibly high quality. I don't think it takes away from the functionality at all. Um, the look actually looks really good um, from a distance and it looks pretty good from up close too. And again, like I said, camo is one of those things where it, you don't run into people that do really good high quality camo. However, there is no scratching and I have actually kind of abused this bar a little bit, throwing calipers on it and such. Um, I put it over on my power center PR platform and ground it back and forth. The Neuralink stood up just fine to it. One thing on that coating though is like I stated before, it is a mountain style Neuralink. Uh, so it's not a volcano, but a mountain. It is aggressive, but in my opinion, I think that the coating really kind of takes away from the sharpness of it. Now it is still very grabby. And if you have chalk on your hand, it feels really good in your hand. If you throw a strap on it, it bites into the strap really nicely, um, but it just doesn't give you that level of, wow, that's an aggressive mountain style neural as other bars that I've had before. Now for some of you that might be good, for some of you that might be bad. Basically, if you're someone that's looking to get into a, an entry level deadlift bar, maybe you're looking to you know, go that direction, uh, this could be a good option because it really isn't that sharp. Um, if you're not into the aggro style knurling of things, uh, this might be a good thing. I um, mean, I'm not saying that this isn't an aggressive bar. Compared to a powerlifting bar, it is more aggressive than a powerlifting bar. It's just not as aggressive as other deadlift bars I've used, such as the Ohio Ohio deadlift bar, the Texas deadlift bar, the Kabuki strength, uh, I think it's the PR deadlift bar, but that one, uh, this one's just a little bit less aggressive than that. And again, that's purely because of the coating that's on it. Getting below the paint, we have the actual shaft itself. It does uh, whip very nicely. It pulls off the ground nicely. It is nice and uniform. Now, one thing with the sleeves is because as you pull that up, um, and there's no slop in the sleeves, it's very quiet in operation. So like as you do your lifts in the morning, I've transitioned, for instance, to a lot of bumper style lifts in the morning just because it's really interesting. My surplus strength urethanes take up less space on the bar than my Kabuki strength irons. And so I've been using my surplus strength bumpers a lot more. And my deadlifts in the morning outside of the 
you know, touching the ground and stuff, it's actually super quiet. <laughs> But it does whip nicely. Um, there's no play in the sleeves. I enjoy using this bar. It's not something that I'm like, oh, well, I've got to use this because I'm doing a review. I actually enjoy grabbing this off the wall, putting it on my deadlift jack, and then going and doing deadlifts with it. I find that it works well, and I think it might be a really good option for all of you. A lot of that has to do with the price, though. So at $325, which includes your shipping, um, this really is a very entry level affordable deadlift bar. I would argue that there's a lot of gyms out there that if they were looking to get into purchasing a deadlift bar for their gym, this would be a great option for you. It is an import piece, but of my three priorities in this gym, which again are American, Canadian made, uh, veteran law enforcement officer owned businesses or high quality pieces of equipment. This does meet two of those three. Sean Crandall is a border patrol agent. That's his day job, which thank you for your service. And uh, this is a high quality piece. Sean Crandall's been on podcasts before and he basically talks about how just because something is made in USA does not mean it's high quality and he is 100% correct. It all has to do with the tolerances that you give the manufacturer of the equipment. The fact that there's zero play in the sleeve, for instance, the end cap construction, the fact that it weighs exactly 44 pounds, which is the claimed weight, the uh, 27 millimeter shaft, which is the claimed shaft diameter, it whips nicely. It's very clear to me that he's given a very high bar to the manufacturers of this. Even though it's an import piece, it still meets two of those three, which means it definitely earns a place in my gym. But tell me what you guys think below. That's been it for this review. I appreciate your time. I appreciate those of you that watch every week. Remember when it comes to your training, you should always keep it better awesome and, of course, badass. I'll see you next time.